my previous video, which you can see, where, where, oh, right here, I showed that the number of scientists who give credence to creation scientists, uh, creation science, that's all in air quotes, but my fingers don't work, anyway, the number of scientists who give credence to creation science, the percent is very low, and the percent of biologists to give credence to creation science is even lower, but wait, what if evolution were proven to be wrong, and the scientific community just didn't see it? There are many books on the subject, and today I am going to review those books that are presented in the second half of the video as best that I can, and stuff. There have been many embarrassing books published within the last 20 years. Books that are not written from a Christian perspective at all, but from a purely scientific perspective concerned only with scientific truth that quite heavily dispel many of the myths of evolution that are continually put forth as truth. Here are some of those books readily available over the internet for your review. And that's seven books right there. So let's do as best I can for review. First of all, with every book, I'm going to see if I can actually find it on the internet to read. And then I'm going to, like, I'm not going to read seven books for one video. I'm going to try to find reviews or articles on it, uh, on the books. That way, I mean, honestly, you think I'm going to read seven books just for a YouTube video? I'm a mouse. I, I, I mean, do you know how long mice live? Approximately three years. And I've been on YouTube since, like, 2006. Okay, I'm not gonna go waste my time reading seven books on creationism and stuff. <laughs> uh, the uh, first book on our list is Darwin Was Wrong, A Study in Probabilities. Now, uh, I've read some reviews on Amazon. Um, uh, by the way, all the links and stuff can be found in the below box. I don't know, it's not a sidebar anymore. Anyway, um, so um, it's, I've read some reviews and it seems that most of the reviews talk about how the book is discussing probability and how complex life, and even simple life, modern in the modern day, is so complex and so unlikely to have happened that it mustn't have been um, random mutations and natural selection. Let me give an example of uh, random chance and unlikely events that, yeah, uh, hold on. Here you can see a bunch of coins. Now I'm going to flip every single one of these coins and we're going to see the answer, if it's heads or tails. So here's the first coin, a nickel, and we're gonna flip the coin. The first coin was tails, flip another. The second coin was heads. Flip another. Here are all the coins flipped and lined up in the order that they landed. Now the first coin is a tails, and the prob probability of getting a tails on the first one is 50-50. And the probability of getting heads on the second one and a tails on the first one is 25%. So, as you can see, getting this exact arrangement is an extremely, extremely low probability. In fact, it is nearly impossible that you will ever flip all these coins and get it so that they line up in this exact pattern where the first one is a tail, second one's a head, third one's a head, fourth one's a tail, fifth one's a head, etc. So this means that when I was flipping the coins, God must have taken the coins and decided which they would land, which um, which side they would land on, right? That is the sort of probability creationist logic that I despise so very, very much. In conclusion, even though an event is extremely unlikely to unfold in the exact way that it did twice, that doesn't mean that it's impossible to happen the first time. Also, please note that the coin flipping was a metaphor for um, extremely unlikely events happening in the exact way that they happen, and not evolution, because evolution is not all just random chance. Evolution also takes into account natural selection. You know, that thing where the more fit animal survives, or more fit organism survives. Evolution is not all random chance like some creations like to make it out to me. And that makes me angry! <laughs> the next book on our list is uh, The Bone Peddlers by Fix. And an adequate um, uh, criticism of Fix's book can be seen on talkorigins.org, one of my favorite websites. Um, it seems that mostly what Fix is talking about is moot about how some fossils seem fake. Of course, he seems to be ignoring the uh, many, many other fossil transitional fossils that are not fake. So... There we have that. Many searches of Darwin, Re Darwin Retired by Macbeth have led to creationist websites saying you should buy the book. But I cannot find it on Amazon, nor can I find it on Google or Bing, and I can't find any reviews on it, so I guess that disproves this statement. Readily available over the internet for your review. Next we have Francis Frankie Hitching, who 
actually believes in evolution, just not Darwinist uh, and natural selection sort of evolution, as well as paranormal things revolving around mind pyramids and probably Bigfoot. Yeah, um, Mr. Uh, Frankie really does like the supernatural. According to Talk Origins, he, his writings include Earth Magic, Dowsing, The Psi Connection, or PSI, or whatever, that thing from Earthbound, uh, Mysterious World, and Atlas of the Unexplained, Fraud, Mischief, and the Supernatural, and Instead of Darwin. Um, he, according to the website as well, um, he, he is a very good TV script writer, but does not have any scientific credentials, and he claimed to be a member of the Royal Archaeological Institute, but that institute said that he is not part of that club. So, his writing does not have any scientific merit. Yay! Idiot. I hate Frankie Hitching. Just saying. Just saying. I mean, honestly, this guy is incredibly superstitious, but not in the religious sense. I mean, he believes in Atlantis, and miraculous healing, and pyramidology. All this wacky stuff that you see on, like, like, eh. So, in conclusion, the neck of the giraffe, no. This video is wonderfully deceptive, and I doubt if the author even read these books. G.R. Taylor does not deny evolution in The Great Evolution Mystery. He says that, um, more mechanisms of evolution should be taken into account than just Darwinian natural selection. So, I mean, the video is making it sound like he denies evolution, but he doesn't. He's just saying that there should be more of a, um, evolution should be, should, the scientists who research evolution should take into account other theories, like Lamarckism, even though Lamarckism is kind of completely wrong. But, yeah. Darwinism, the refutation of a myth, is also written by somebody who believes in evolution. It's a history of the theory of evolution, uh, proposing that Darwin was not the first one to think of it. And it, it um, talks about how, again, because after all, DNA was not known in the time of Darwin, um, mechanisms for evolution are incorrect. It does not deny natural selection. It just, it, it talks about modern, the modern theory of evolution. And finally, Adam and Evolution, I could find no reviews for. What? We're out of time? Gosh darn it! Okay, check out episode 3 right here! Click the link now!